right. We are now live on Wade's Ventures YouTube channel, guys. Let me go ahead and get this other web browser going so I can see chat. Guys, welcome in. We already have people in the chat. Let me say hello to some people, and then we will get going with today's guest of the evening. And uh, Lisa, welcome in. Welcome in. As always, you're always in every single uh, live show I do, so I appreciate that. Thrifty Santa, Barry, you changed your name. I love it. I love it. Thrifty Santa. Um, Cindy, welcome in. Oh, my gosh, you guys are flooding in here. Stephanie, what's going on? We're going to get you on the live show. I'm going to keep saying that until you come live with me. Uh, Tracy, what's going on? Thrifty Santa again. Kelly's in the house. We all know the amazing Kelly. You guys should check out her YouTube channel. Crafty, what's going on? Hickory, I love your name. Um, Hip Flip and Mama is in the house. We'll give an update on Farm Girl Scavenger towards the end of the video for sure. Um, and we have Big Thrift is in the house, my amazing admin for the night. So, guys, welcome into Wade's Ventures YouTube channel. As you guys know, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. Today's a Thursday. <laughs> um, we have amazing people on here. And without further ado, I'm going to turn over to my guest to give an introduction. Um, go ahead. Let's let's let people know who who we got on the other line here. Hi, I am Jennifer Cooney, and I am known as the Thrifting Wanderluster. Jennifer, first of all, I saw your YouTube today, two videos, in fact, and I love what you do on YouTube. I'm super excited for you to come on here. I'm going to learn a little bit, and uh, and I'm sure everybody else will too. So I've got a series of questions. Those of you who not you know, been to my uh, YouTube. Those of you are lurkers in chat that don't don't say anything. That's fine. But for Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, we invite people that are just growing, um, that are going to be amazing on YouTube and social media, and we get them on my channel. And I ask them some very basic but important questions. And Jennifer, tonight I met Jennifer through a really cool friend of mine on Instagram called the Bin Pickers. You guys may have heard of them. And um, I had to have her on my channel, so I messaged her. And Jennifer, correct me if I'm wrong, how many days has it been since we messaged? Two? Two or three, yeah. Two or three. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so my admin is going to be putting Jennifer's YouTube channel in chat because he is amazing. Um, and so you guys definitely click that, subscribe to her. But let's get on with this interview. Jennifer, Tell me a little bit about you. Are you full time, part time? Give me a little. Give me the skinny on your reselling career here. I'm full time, but I honestly couldn't tell you how many hours I put in. I probably work 60, 80 hours, but it feels like five hours. <laughs> like because I love I love my job so much. Like I, it honestly doesn't feel like work. If we go on vacation. I want to thrift. I want to work. Like it's just like my life. So um, I went full time. I would say the start of the year before that, I was a full time photographer and also a part time to full time reseller. And then I realized that I could actually do this and stop doing as many photography jobs and take only the jobs that I was really passionate about and supplement this with reselling. So I've been able to do that. And I owned my photography business for the last 15 years and um, have been a photographer for 20. So, Wow. Um, so first and foremost, you've got a big portion of eBay and reselling online down the photos, which yeah. is a massive part of what sells. Um, and the fact that you said that you work so many hours and you it feels like you only work four to five, what's that saying? If you're doing something you love, it's not work. And um, I think that's really cool. How long have we been full time? I would say maybe since November, December, but I don't know that I work more hours or less than I've worked before. I was telling my husband tonight, I'm like, how many hours do you think I work? And I'm like, I, I really have never kept track. I work every single day, but I'm happy to take a few days off and go do something spontaneous with the family. Like it's really flexible and I love that. I. Do you have a schedule during the week when my daughter is in daycare or preschool and my husband's at work? I do have a schedule and I keep to that. So yeah, but, but it's fun. I love it. Um, 
I can I can honestly tell when you're talking that you you truly love it, and I think that's what's amazing about this. I mean, you have the best culmination. You love what you're doing, and you can take time off for your daughter, your family, and mm-hmm. I think that's really cool. So, what? Tell me how how did you learn about eBay, Jennifer? Like, when was the? Can you, do you remember the time that you somebody told you about eBay or that you learned about it? Were you a buyer before you were a seller? Give me a little bit of information on that. Sure. Um, I opened my first eBay account in 1996, and so I bought some porcelain, um, like uh, made Chinese hand painted like porcelain pieces. I thought were cool. It was like a totally random purchase. And then I went to a garage sale with my dad. I remember I was in college, and I went to a garage sale with my dad when I was home, and I found some cool china, and I sold it on eBay. And then I was just doing it like for fun, like a very part time, like just one or two things like, you know, here and there, like nothing serious. And then my dad, he loves eBay and he loves finding a good deal. He doesn't do it like as a reseller, but he loves to buy cars on eBay. And then maybe he'll flip them and make a couple thousand dollars or he'll keep it or, you know, he'll make one of us take that car. (laughs) So he's been all over the United States buying cars off eBay. So he's always been into it. So um, I would say I sold more full time on eBay starting in 2014, um, 2013 or 2014. And I sold full time on eBay for a few years and full time, meaning I still had photography. So I was doing it alongside photography. And then I um, got really busy with Poshmark and eBay and I had an unfortunate circumstance on eBay. And I kind of had to make a hard decision and I decided to quit eBay and just do Poshmark. So now you're, you're just selling on Poshmark? Yeah. Okay, so first and foremost, um, I'm, I'm gonna really love talking with you then because I'm assuming you've got some good photograph tips for us. Uh, those of you that are in chat, you might want to listen up because uh, <laughs> I that's one thing I struggle with sometimes is the shadowing and different things. So. I am going to pick your brain with that, but what? Um, before we go into too deep of details here, um, first of all, it sounds like you're a family of eBayers. Does your does your dad ever give you stuff to sell online? He'll show me cool things that he's found, maybe, or see if it's worth something, or, or like not ask me specifically, but like, yeah, he he loves going to a thrift store. My mom, on the other hand, I think she doesn't think it's a real thing maybe necessarily <laughs> interest in thrifting or going to a thrift store but um my dad would go with me and hunt for treasures so what is your what does your parents think like what are not not necessarily just your parents but what does your family think or your friends think like when you say you saw on, on Poshmark and that you've sold on eBay what what do, what do they all think when you're full-time selling online um they will like not respond and then ask me how photography is going. Like, I think a lot of people don't think it's a real job. And so I'll say like, no, I'm doing this more than photography. Like this is really my thing now. And I'll say, so how's photography going still? Like, it, like none of them like have much to say about it. Like they're supportive. My parents are supportive. My friends, it's kind of why I started a new Instagram page just to kind of have reseller community and support because like other people wouldn't get it. If I put this on my personal page, like there wouldn't really be that support system there. So I'm happy to have found this. I honestly didn't know that there were YouTube videos about this until a year ago. I didn't know this was a thing. I didn't know there was a community like this. So it's been really cool. So um, first and foremost, it was, how did you find out about, did you, were you one day were you just going on YouTube and and search resellers or how did you find out that there was a community? I Googled, I remember I Googled like reselling clothing on Poshmark. Like I was Googling something or reselling clothing on eBay and I came across Nicole State on Google. And so then I found State's Place YouTube page and that was the first one I had found. And the second one I'd found was the bin pickers. And this was a year ago. And so I started watching and I remember my husband came home and I probably watched 30 videos and I'm like, did you know people will like go buy stuff from a thrift store and then they resell? Like, did you know that was a thing? Because I was buying stuff from auctions. Like I, I did liquidation.com. So I was buying pallets and pallets of stuff like new merchandise. And I didn't realize people bought like thrift store merchandise and flipped it. So 
that was like a whole new world to me. My husband came home and I'm like, so Joe said this and this is what happened. Like, like they were like people I knew and like, I knew all about them. So it like fascinated me. And a couple of weeks later I went to Ohio and my in-laws are super supportive and they're really into thrifting and I've got my sister-in-law into it and she's doing awesome on Poshmark. And so I went to a thrift store and I did my first like sourcing um, to flip and it was all over and it was like, that's when I started doing Poshmark. So um, we have, since you are a listener and a watcher of this channel, um, you probably know, but we do a thing. And um, when people sub to your channel, um, they say what number they subbed at. And even after the video is done, those of those people that are watching this after it's live, they can still see chat. And they always put in the comments what the number of sub they are on your channel. And so I always like to uh, like to shout them out. Hip Flip and Mama said she's 111 on your channel. Um, Thrifty Santa, 114. So guys, when you sub to her channel, click that link and let me know what you sub at. Um, so... What does your husband think of you reselling? Is the house organized? A disaster. Or? A disaster. <laughs> <It's such> a <laughs> um, that would be like our only conflict in our relationship is just to try to keep it picked up. Because let me give you like a little, we live, we moved from a like 1800 square foot like ranch. And then we moved um, last June into a townhouse at 700 square feet. And I have almost 1,400 items listed plus my unlisted merchandise. So you can imagine how much stuff that is in a very tiny space. I do all of the photography in our bedroom. And so, <laughs> yeah, like it's a two bedroom place, it's tiny. So um, he never complains about it. He's super patient and um, he really is supportive. Like he's always telling me I need to get back out there and source. And he like would let me spend any amount of anything because he trusts my like eye for things and like what it'll resell for so he's really good about it and i appreciate that i get to have such a flexible job while he goes to the nine to five so. um first and foremost are you uh, so you guys aren't sleeping in inventory then uh, in your in your bedroom uh a little bit yeah sometimes bit. push it off the bed <laughs> yeah, yeah. so first and foremost are you um what's your poshmark name so everybody can follow you um, it's Jaybird 1976, but it'll come up thrifting wanderluster on the top. It just wouldn't let me change my original like screen name because I had I was on Poshmark buying stuff well before I was this, and then so I think you can find it at Jaybird 1976. So where are you? You said you did wholesale, but where are you thrifting now? Um, wh what type of places do you like going to? Definitely, I'm trying to stick to the bins right now to keep my cost of goods down. But um, I definitely will go to Retail Goodwill, Salvation Army. And I like to get to Chicago at least a few times a year since it's just a three-hour drive and source up there. So uh, you said Goodwill bins. What's, yeah. what's your guys' price there? It's always different. It's, we, the price increased this year. It used to be $1.19 a pound, and they increased it to $1.69 a pound. Oh, huh. okay. And that's that's flat across the board for everything. We used to have to separate shoes and ceramics and glassware and books. And now it's just all together. Now, do you need to buy a certain amount and then it's cheaper? Because I know ours, you have to buy 25 pounds and then right. it drops down. Yeah, the same. Okay. Yeah, I think it's 10% or 20% less or something. And then they're always sending $5 coupons out for when you spend 100 like when you spend a certain amount. And so I'm certainly getting filler coupons like every week. You know, so yeah. Now, are you, are you, how are you getting those coupons? Because I know it's different. Are you set up on a mailing list, or did you go in the store and yeah, they they have your number in there? Or how how's it's that? Rewards work? card. It's with a rewards card, so I give them my phone number. Okay. We'll yeah. talk a little bit. I'm curious about your wholesale or bulk buy that you did. Any tips, tricks? Um, tell me a little bit about that and that process. So liquidation.com. Um, is actually based they have a warehouse based about 20 minutes from me and so online you can go and you can buy returns brand new merchandise um lots from macy's i would say macy's home depot nordstrom are some of the big ones so i used to get some of the nordstrom um like store returns and then i would get the amazon returns and 
So you could see the whole manifest of what you're going to get, what that retails for, and if it's open package or if the tags are still attached, all that information. So I was getting a lot of pallets from there. We would go pick them up. So that saved on shipping costs. And so I like to get the ones with a lot of outdoor merchandise, like the Canada Goose or the outdoor research, like some of the higher end expensive outdoor stuff. And I would sell that on eBay. And then the stuff that it wasn't, quite as expensive. And so it wasn't worth my time putting on eBay. I would just like list it on offer up or something local, like Facebook group that I had and people would pick it up on my porch and leave me money under my doormat. So that's convenient. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're getting, we're starting to get questions on how you take photos. And um, I think this is going to be really good. So tell us a little bit about when you buy the item, how, what's your process on taking the photo? Do you flat light, use mannequins, like different settings, camera, phone? I'm really curious on this one. I feel like I'm so going to disappoint you guys because I have thousands of dollars worth of camera gear and I use my phone. So I, I did a test with my camera, with my phone, and my phone took more color correct photographs than my camera did. And it adds a lot of extra time to take it from my DSLR, transfer it to my computer, transfer it back to my phone, upload it to Poshmark. So if it's taking like the quality of photograph is as good for my phone, I mean, it's a lot easier. So I, I like to photograph like during the day if possible, because I love that natural light, but I do have two continuous um, light boxes. So um, if I use two of them at the right angle, you're going to eliminate any shadows you get in the evening when it's not light outside. So that that's what I do in the evening. So I don't have any shadows and I still have good lighting and I can photograph stuff any time of day. And, um, otherwise I, I don't, I don't know. Like <laughs> I don't have any like really amazing photography, like secrets. Oh, I don't, I do flat lay some things, um, small things, but since we're in kind of a tight space, it really is just have like this pretty gold hanger and a command hook that you can't see on my wall. And that's what I do and make sure it's clean and it's clear and the stuff is like, and you know, ironed and looks good and that's what I do. So hip hop and mom said, what phone do you use to take photographs? Um, I have an iPhone eight, I think the newest one, whatever <laughs> the new one is. That's what I have. <laughs> I'm uh, asking my husband and he has headphones on so he doesn't hear me. I used to work for a cell phone company, so I, uh, okay. yeah. Uh, so first and foremost, where are you, like, where are you storing all these items at? Do you have bins in your, in your, uh, cause I tell you what, if I had a one bedroom, two bedroom or a town home, um, my wife is so, I'm so blessed to have an amazing wife, you know, because I, I would be able to fill the whole thing up and she'd be almost fine with it. But, how does that work for you? Where do you put your inventory? Do you hang it? Do you, do you put it in bins? We have a very tiny unfinished basement where I have three shelving systems. So I have them in bins like yours, but mine don't look nearly as organized as yours. So, <laughs> um, but, um, girls and boys, athletic men's jeans and women's jeans and so on. So I have them in either tubs or Ikea bags and just on the shelves. And then I have some of my higher end items. Uh, I leave them in my bedroom. I have like a clothing rack and I have some like little baskets and I keep them up there or some of the more expensive shoes also. Nice. Now, um, this looks like a, a hot organized non mess, but it definitely is a mess. Uh, sometimes. But um, You can't see anything down here. <laughs> so, yeah, I understand. Well, what um and it's it's funny like reselling sometimes you've got to it's moving one box to one location to another to another yeah. to another yeah. you know it's, it's really weird but all right so now we're gonna get into the good stuff guys and by the way we do have a small haul video coming up for you guys so stay tuned for that um so tell me a little bit about what you're passionate about selling out of everything that you sell on Poshmark and online and what you used to sell on eBay, what are you passionate about selling? What do you like selling the most? I love finding a super unique item I've never found before. Like the items that I liked selling the most in it give me the most profit, but I just thought they were really cool. Like I found an Adidas, um, like regatta French 
like it was like 50 years old sweatshirt with um sailboats on it that was from france like it was like invaluable and that was just a really cool unique piece so like stuff like that but if i could sell just like one thing all the time i'd probably pick like pendleton maybe because i you know i love pendleton blank and the flannels and the blanket coats and the wallets and so uh, yeah i definitely love that any higher end shoes i love selling high-end shoes i have a lot of pendleton here in oregon yes you do <laughs> i'm envious of that <laughs> so um tell me a little bit about the bin pickers you know the bin pickers yeah uh, I mean, like how did you how did you get in contact with them via instagram or how do you um how did you know about the bin pickers because we love i don't know if you know but in my channel we love the bin pickers you guys in chat let me know if you love the bin pickers but how did you uh how did you find out about them did you just google search them too yeah same thing so when i found a coal and i realized this was a thing and then i looked on YouTube for some more people. And that's when I found you and Lindy and Rally Roots, like just like all the people. And so I started watching all of your videos. And so with them, I've been watching them for about a year. And so I watched them when they were in California. And then I saw when they were packing up their pod and they were gonna drive across the United States, seeing which bin was the best and they were gonna move there. And I was really excited. I was like with bated breath, I'm like, are they gonna move to Indianapolis, you know, my city? And so I was excited to see like when they popped back up that they bought a house, you know, like 20 minutes from me. And so then I would go to the bins and I would like look for them like a little stalker. And so um, my husband was there one day with me and I'm like, oh my gosh, they're there. Like I see them right there. I was like, um, can I go get a picture with them? And he's like, do not do that. Don't go get a picture with them. <laughs> but I went and said hi. And now I, I see them probably, you know, two or three times a week now. We talk and Michelle and I talk a lot now when we're there and they're the nicest, most down to earth people you'd ever be. So I always see her talking to everybody there because she's quite popular and everybody knows her. So, yeah. I um, First and foremost, like I can tell that they're the same people online as they are in person. And, Absolutely. Um, it, they're really, really cool. I've been bugging her to come on my live show sometime. I know she's nervous. Yeah, she's never done a live chat. And yeah. yeah, one yeah. of these days. One of these days. But yeah. um, Wade, Sam says, Wade, you're getting better at these interviews. First of all, Jennifer is an easy interview because she does really well uh, live, and uh, it's it's really nice to have have live guests like Jennifer that are amazing that make my life so much easier. Um, so tell me a little bit about your husband. I'm curious. I know he's listening to this, but <laughs> he goes to the bins with you. Is he there as a bodyguard? Because it can get rough at those bins sometimes. Or is, oh, he, yeah. is he there getting stuff for you? Does, does he get jeans and ask you if this is a good one or? Well, he rarely goes because usually when he can go, the toddler is with us and our bins, it's no place for a toddler, like at all. Um, so the last couple of weeks, though, he worked through lunch break to take off a little early while our daughter was in daycare still, and he went with me. And so he will go on his own, and he fills up a cart, and it's kind of fun. Like, it's a fun little test, and he'll, like, have me sort it and see what's good. And so last week, he filled it up and with a lot of faded glory. And so... I let him know that's not what we're looking for. And then he filled it up with um, some elastic jeans and I threw them all back and he said, but you said mom jeans were in and they were grandma jeans. And so I explained to him the difference and that that wasn't a thing. So, but he is good at finding some Lululemon and he is awesome at finding, I'll give him 10 shoes without the match and say like, can you go look for this? And he finds them. And so he's getting better. Soon he's going to be rolling into work and be like, oh, I know those jeans. <laughs> How are you managing with a, a kiddo? I'm really curious about this because, as you know, I have one and one on the way in a couple months, less than a couple months. Yeah. How are you working out with a kiddo? Well, luckily, I have a place I can take her for preschool, and the preschool has a daycare, so I can leave her there during the week as much or as little as need be but we try to keep her home a couple days a week so she's not there all the time and i get extra time with her because that's the benefit of you know working for yourself um but there was a point like this winter that she was home for a month and that was hard 
And there was a point where I had her home for a whole year when I was doing eBay and all the auctions and stuff. And it was just, it was really difficult to balance that. And you have to really think of this job, even if you work from home, you have to shut down everything that's going on around you when you're able to. So like if there are dishes to be done or laundry or it needs swept, like you have to like pretend like this is my office. I can't see this other stuff and I need to focus on my job. And so when she's here, I will set her up with some activities, Play-Doh, painting, whatever. And, you know, try to do like my packaging, maybe when she's painting like next to me or, you know, whatever, and try to balance it. She'll ask, I'll take her to the regular retail stores and she's really good. Cause I tell her I'll buy her something if she's good. So <laughs> she's she'll like sit in the car and she'll wait patiently until i buy her toy <laughs> smart smart girl <laughs> um so i'm um, just guys if you have any questions put it in chat um i will definitely shout you out and i will definitely um answer the question or have our amazing guests answer the question and guys um as you know um if you have youtube channels and you want to promote it um i do not mind that in my chat in fact i welcome people that uh, want to grow their youtube and so if you guys want to put your youtube channel in chat the name of it um, that's perfectly fine so all right so i got a good question for you, you ready i'm ready how has reselling changed your life why are you so happy you, I can tell on your face, you love what you do. You do it for a lot of hours. Like what, what are the aspects of reselling that you love? I know you kind of touched on a little bit, but why do you love reselling? Like, tell me. It's just like really the thrill of finding something really unique, really expensive, getting it for 20 cents. And you're like, oh my gosh, I found a Gucci scarf for 20 cents. This is ridiculous. So like, it's just the thrill of it. I love like finding like unique things. I found a bag of, what was it? Japanese money, like from, what what was it? I'm trying to ask my husband, from, from a long, really old Japanese money. But I mean, just like finding really unique things, little treasures. Um, my old job was really super stressful. And I would probably say every single day that I was really stressed about something and had like some anxiety issues from whether like, like I used to do a lot of destination weddings. So I might like travel to Italy and shoot a wedding and then go to Mexico and shoot a wedding and have all this editing to do in between. And it just, I had zero time for family. People would say like, can you come to this birthday party? And I would say, you have to let me know nine months in advance because all my weekends were booked up for um, weddings. And so with this job, I have weekends with my family and I love that. Like we can go to farmer's markets and we can go to the park and, you know, go on road trips and, I, I haven't had that until literally this year. This is the first year I've had weekends free in 15 years. So, I, I bet your husband um, can notice a difference in you too, like less stress, right? Yes. yes. And he missed having me home for weekends and my weekends always being busy because he was home with Daphne all weekend and I was gone working. And so it just, it wasn't good also for our family. So Swamp, I didn't know you had a YouTube channel. Um, that's really cool. So um, Pac-Man, go ahead and throw that um, Jennifer's YouTube link a few more times if you can, my man. That way we can blow her YouTube up. I'm really excited. I, I'm going to be binge watching you now. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, okay. So give me a few tips or tricks of the trade. Like, well, before you answer this question, what is what do you like about you, uh, eBay and what do you like about Poshmark? Because you sold on both. Um, <laughs> What's the, like, what, what do you like about, I know you're probably going to say shipping for Poshmark, but give us a little in-depth, like, tips or tricks for Poshmark that make you successful. Sure. Um, I rarely have any issues or cases open on Poshmark. So I would say every 250 orders or so, I have a case opened. And only one out of four of those is decided in the buyer's favor. So, like, I don't have like hardly any returns. I have sold now um, 3,205 items and that's in 14 months. And um, I've only had five cases against me ever. So I think just making sure to be 
you know, clear in your photographs. And I'm not even lengthy in my descriptions. I'm pretty lazy. <laughs> like I take the pictures and make sure to show all the angles. And, you know, I make sure to just to be honest about the condition. And um, I know this is a controversial subject, whether to make your package pretty or not pretty. And people think it's ridiculous to like wrap a package and send it with a bow. But I do. I, I send a pretty long thank you note with all of them. Like if I see somebody's from New Orleans, I'm like, oh, I miss this in New Orleans. Like I love this. And I try to make it really like personal to the person and wherever they live or like something we might've talked about on Poshmark. And it really does seem to make a difference because I have quite a few people that are like loyal shoppers. They come back. Like I have this one lady that came back tonight and she bought a bundle of eight items and it made my goal for the whole day just like those eight items and she shopped with me like every couple of weeks she's buying stuff from me so i think just like a small personal touch and i'll just write my thank you cards while watching trashy tv and drinking my coffee in the morning and it's easy and it makes a difference so yeah i do that and then also like um this has nothing to do with the packaging and presenting i think like with the selling being so successful selling so much in a short period of time one thing I love doing, and people might already do this, but if I have something that's really unique or like a higher end item, I'm going to Poshmark and I'm looking for that item, keyword search, and then I go to solds, and then I follow every single person that liked all those sold items. So like, let's say I had a Fendi purse, I'm gonna go to sold Fendi purses, and I'm gonna follow all those people. Because those people that liked that Fendi purse and the sold items, they probably were interested in buying that Fendi purse, and nine times out of 10, my item ends up selling pretty quickly. That's a good tip. Um, uh, uh, we have um, Hickory said, can we get her Poshmark closet again? Jaybird1976. And um, like J-B-I-R-D. So I've got a really interesting question for you. What do you think about men selling on Poshmark? Because, and oh, then ask, uh, because we got um, daily refinement. Um, Chris, we text and, um, he is killing it. And I love it. He does what my least favorite thing to do is. Um, I hate selling suits. I hate, like, I don't buy them anymore because I would find really expensive, nice ones, but they would sit in a pile because I don't want to measure them. <laughs> so like measuring a suit freaks me out, but I, I think it's great. Um, I, I think I'm hoping like I love that it's expanded because they Poshmark didn't used to offer men's clothing. So I love that they offer men's clothing now. And I'm hoping soon that they offer international shipping because I think that's going to open up a world of stuff. And they've been hinting at doing that soon this year. So, well, I, I know that they did. Um, they did do a round of funding and they haven't put that in place yet. And I'm assuming it's for international. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, That's gonna be a game changer, really. Like, oh yeah, and and um, cats meow is my YouTube channel. Uh, we have a comment, and cats meow is a really awesome YouTube channel name. Um, what do you, Jennifer? What do you think? Like, you you've started YouTube. How long have you been? How long how long ago did you start your YouTube channel? By the way, um, a couple months ago, I put up a video just because nobody in my household, the three-year-old and the husband didn't care about watching my haul from the bins. So I thought, well, I'll just make a video and like nobody will watch it and that that's okay. And then I made that and I didn't make another one for a month. And then like a month later I made one and my husband uploads it and does all of the back. Like I don't know anything about this stuff. So he helps me with that. And um, so then recently I thought, gosh, I really enjoy doing this. I'd like to do it on a regular basis, like at least twice a week and once a week a haul. And then the other time, like giving tips and answering questions. So yeah, I'm going to try to do it on a regular basis now. So, you know, um, I, I think possibly you could be the key to get the bin pickers to go live. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to talk them into it. Yeah. They're going to do it. Yes. Yeah. And by the way, you have one amazing husband. I see him in chat. He's posting your information. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> How awesome is it to have a spouse that's so supportive? Yeah. Tell me is. that. It is. Yeah, he's great. And it's funny because we used to go on vacations around my photo shoots. 
And so I'd have to do a photo shoot on vacation. And now we go on vacations and I have to go to thrift stores because I just want to. And so I'm always like hesitant because he's like, let's just go on a non-work vacation, like just a vacation. I'm like, no, I understand. And then I'm like yelping thrift stores nearby secretly. And I'm like, well, like if you want to sleep in, uh, you know, I'll just run a quick errand and be back. So, but he's oh. always good about it. He's like, yeah, let's go to some local thrift stores. It's fine. So he's getting used to the idea of yeah. stopping constantly. Yeah. Um, so for those, okay, you know, personally, I think that I, I'm a big proponent of people starting a YouTube channel for many reasons, right? To, to express their self, to put their self on the web. I think it changes you as a person. Um, tell me like when you, what do you notice differently about you when you started your YouTube channel? Like, were you nervous when you put your first video out that, um, you know, what, what kind of like feelings did you have when you started putting a few videos out on YouTube? It was funny because I remember specifically when I did the first one, my husband was in the other room not saying anything. And I got done and he said, you were really good at that. You were just a natural, like you, you did awesome. And it gave me this like, um, assurance. Like, I don't know. I felt confident and I wouldn't say like, I'm a super confident person. And I wouldn't say that my video was good, but it made me feel confident to do more and it made me excited. So I don't know that I have a lot to offer, <laughs> like, you know, but I, but I really enjoy it. And I've enjoyed that people left comments and, I am enjoying thinking of content and ideas for new ones. And it's made me come out of my shell a little bit because although I'm an extrovert in my business world, like in photography, because I have to be at weddings, I'm kind of an introvert, like at home, because I have to be so extroverted in my outside job. And so, um, can you um, can you tell me how you came up with your YouTube name? Um. I was just needing to think of an Instagram name and I was thinking about like how I really love to travel and Wanderluster. There's like a tattoo that I want eventually and Wanderluster is a part of that. And so I was just like, I wonder if thrifting Wanderluster is taken. And so I just kind of went with that. So we have a, um, we have a comment by the way, um, resale remedy, one of my most favorite interviews. Um, we had a live animal, a turtle on the show that accidentally had to go. Um, that was a really good video. <laughs> seeing that. But she says, I started on Posh. It's a lot easier to list, but I haven't sold yet. First and foremost, I was one of those guys that was an eBayer. By the way, we have 70 people watching, guys. I appreciate all the love. All the awesome. hope. Yes. And gosh, I tell you what, like we're going on a little tangent here, but uh, my sneaky wife, she was smart. She um, she knows my uh, Wade's Ventures YouTube handle. And on my birthday, which was on the 25th of April, yesterday, she logged on there and did a happy birthday. And then I and then I didn't have my phone. I saw my phone that like light up like a Christmas tree, right? And uh, and then I looked and she put happy birthday and a ton of people wish me happy birthday. So those of you who wish me happy birthday, thank you so much. I'm finding it tough to respond to everybody, but I personally have been in those shoes where, um, you know, I re I asked somebody a question I didn't, I didn't get an answer back, and um, I don't don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna slowly get through all the social media stuff. So I just want to let everybody know that's in shot. But so tell me like the about when you when you because you were selling on eBay and then you went to Poshmark. Like what made you make the change? Like because I know for me. What made me make the change was I remember watching one of Chris's videos and he, that was when he first got started and I kind of mimic him sometimes. And, um, what, what made you made the change to Poshmark? I would say, um, it was getting complicated to keep up with shipping on both platforms and making sure something's deleted from this closet, you know, and like if I'm cross posting something, it, it was getting a little bit stressful, but there was like a big thing that happened. Um, where I went and shot a wedding in Sri Lanka and I had sold a lens prior to us leaving an expensive camera lens that I sold for a little over $800. We go to Sri Lanka and we have zero cell service. We're in the jungle, like middle of nowhere for days. And he opened up a case because he decided he didn't want the lens anymore. And I wasn't able to respond within the four day period that you have to respond within. So he kept the $800 in the lens. And so 
I went and went around with PayPal. PayPal gave me the money back. And then I had to talk to eBay. eBay took the money back again. Like it was, it was a whole thing. And I was really just, I was a little upset at the time. And so I was like, I'm just going to focus on Poshmark. And so I just, I stopped on eBay for a bit, focused on Poshmark. And now I think I might go back to eBay like super part-time because I miss selling like um, some unique hard good items I would find at the bins because I come across things that are really cool and I'm like, gosh, this is awesome, but I don't have the platform to sell it on right now. So I might dip my toe back in it for just hard goods and like keep all the clothes on Poshmark. So we have a, uh, we have a comment. I'm not going to tell you who it's from. But maybe you can guess. Share your closet till your fingers bleed. <laughs> I'll let you guess who that was. I um, okay. Can I tell you that I am obsessed with getting ambassador on Poshmark? Literally obsessed. Um, <laughs> and like I I I can't tell you why because I don't know. I mean, maybe you can correct me, but getting um, ambassador really doesn't do much, right? Um, some people have said it's hurt their sales, but I've been ambassador before they had this ambassador program when it was different than it is now. So my sales never suffered, but some people have has said that. So I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just like literally want to be called an ambassador for some reason. Yeah, right, right. You just want to put that in your title. <laughs> Let yeah. people know. So I know you're new on social media somewhat, right? Uh, well, yeah. I kind of went, like, I had Facebook, and I quit Facebook last year entirely. I had a different Instagram page, started the new Instagram page, which is the thrifting stuff, and brand new to YouTube. So what, um, what like, what, I know you kind of named off five already, but the reason I asked this question is, is I, those of you who are in chat that possibly don't know, um, you know, possibly there's people that you watch on YouTube that you love watching that somebody in chat has never heard of. So do you have a few people that you watch regularly that, um, you can name off people that you yeah. love watching? Probably a few of these you guys know, maybe a few you don't know. So I'll start with the ones you might not be as familiar with. Um, I like watching Boondoggle Bliss for Poshmark tips. She's a great lady. She's in California. And she puts a lot of effort into her YouTube videos and she goes thoroughly into information on how to do things and tips and tricks. So that's a good resource if you want to sell in Poshmark. And um, I like Hazel Hart's vintage for learning about um, vintage clothing that I'm not really as familiar about. That's something I love, but I don't know anything about it. So I learn a lot from her. Um, I like Rally Roots because I feel like they have super positive like energy like no drama hard workers like so i love that i love the bin pickers because i think they're like just real people they're down to earth it's interesting to see what they found i mean these guys found a box of pampers that they sold for 900 dollars a few weeks ago how crazy is that so um they're great and um who else do i like I watch a lot of people like I have it running all the time when I'm listing things. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm drawing a blank now, but Oh, New York thrifter. I love her. Um, New York thrifter. She's so like cool to me because she's finding these crazy brands I've never heard of before. And she's a, um, producer, um, on a TV channel in New York city. So she does this just for fun on the side and she has really cool content where she, takes only the money that she's made from reselling stuff from local bins to a like Play-Doh's closet and uses that money for her vacation. So she took her son on a two week trip and the only cash that they could spend was cash where they flipped the stuff during their trips. So that's kind of fun. So Thrifty Santa said vintage diapers are insane money on eBay. Yeah. Um, it's funny that Thrifty Santa came up with that. <laughs> yeah. I love that he changed his name. I saw um, your interview with him, and I like that he changed it to Thrifty Santa. That's perfect. He's like the most humble, seems like the kindest guy I've like ever not known that I've seen on the internet. Like, yeah, a big how, heart. How, how amazing is this? Like, I, I don't want to chew my own horn here, but the fact that we can meet people that you don't see every day, I think it's refreshing. It is really cool. Even for me, like, it's super easy for me to interview you guys because it's you guys are 
cut from the same cloth. You have the same goals. Like you're trying to like make it selling online and there's so many different techniques and ideas out there. We, we learn so much. And, uh, we have, um, uh, Lisa said YouTube has been my new TV. I would. Yeah, absolutely. I would have to agree. Um, all right. This is the part of the video that we have 70 people watching guys. And this is the part of the video that I like the most because it shows what people buy all across the States. Um, so let's go ahead and go into this haul video. Uh, sure. Jen, show, show me what you got. I only grabbed a few things and, um, I'm going to show you first, maybe one of the best deals I've ever gotten. I didn't recently get this, but, um, I have hundreds of them. So, and they're sitting right here. So I'll show you this. So I went to the Salvation Army and they had a box sitting on the floor and it said, um, $1.99 a piece. And it was just like something in a plastic bag. And I'd never heard of it at the time. Hugo loves Tiki. The bin pickers have these also now because um, they found them on Salvation Army. But anyhow, so there are these, I look it up, I look the brand up and the company's actually locally based, but it's a European design romper. And these are about $60 a piece. So they were priced $1.99. So they had two big boxes of them. And I said, what would you do for the whole box? Like if I bought one box of them, and she said, how many do you think are in there? And I'm like, I really have no idea. Maybe 50. I, I don't know. I can count them. She's like, no, don't worry about it. She sold it for 40. I counted them at home. I had 110. I went back and bought the other ba box for $40. So I spent just over $80 with tax and have almost 250 of these rompers. And I have made over $1,400 profit on them so far. And it's easy. They just sit right here and I just sell them like as they come through on Poshmark and people love them. So that's been like a really awesome thing. So um, then two days ago, I found this Pendleton blanket coat here a couple days ago. That is and awesome. I've been sitting out for about four hours because it was the rotation from the night before. So I was amazed that nobody grabbed this Pendleton blanket coat. I've only seen one of them sell um, that is that style and it sold for like $380. So um, I put on Poshmark for, I think, $275. I had an offer for $60, bucks, which I kindly declined at the moment. But uh, yeah, so I think I'll sell for sure. I found these the other day just... Some Stuart Weitzman wedges, espadrilles. Um, these are still selling online for four hundred and ninety-five dollars. So they cost me about a dollar eighty. I listed them for one seventy-five right now, and I have a bunch of people liking them and watching these right now. Um, grab these Tory Burch boots, which are still online for these are about four hundred dollar boots. The, the, these are all from the bins, so this cost me maybe a couple dollars as well. And a Fendi bag. I did pay $5 for this. Um, it leather, it looks practically brand new. I don't, I couldn't find the exact match to this, but several hundred dollars for that bag. And I grabbed this last night. My husband spotted this last night at the bins. They brought out a bunch of coach purses. So we grabbed this. It weighs next to nothing. So it's maybe a dollar fifty for this coach bag. It looks brand new. So, um, yeah, those are a few things that I've grabbed the last couple of days. Okay. Thanks for uh, blowing up the uh, haul video here because I don't think I can ever match that. <laughs> well, of course I grab my best things. You know? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. Are you guys not impressed? Are you guys not? that? That's amazing. Uh, first of all, I echo the Salvation. I don't know. If you're, yeah, you are following me on Instagram, obviously. And, yeah. and I, you know that I shop at a Salvation Army. And um, I crush it. I crush it at Salvation Army. And yeah. I got one. Um, I'll show you. Um, so I got um, people don't think Salvation Army is amazing. And, and by the way, Salvation Army does a lot more um, deals, I find, than Goodwill. You can yeah. negotiate with that. Right, uh, absolutely. And especially in bulk. So as you guys know, I bought a bunch of these, right? Um, and I paid a dollar fifty. Now, had it been end of season, I probably would have got it for fifty cents each. But they wanted five bucks. It dropped down to two fifty. I got her down to a dollar fifty each. That's I amazing. bought four hundred and forty-one of them. And I've, if you guys look at my um, store, um, one guy almost bought three hundred dollars worth of them yesterday. Um, <laughs> I've 
almost recruit yeah. crazy. It's all crazy. Um, That's amazing. First and foremost, like, why didn't I come up with this idea? You blow yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, wait, do you shop at Salvation Army in Hillsboro? I shop at all of them in Oregon. What's going on, Rita? Welcome in. Um, Gina, what's going on? Man, this chat is fun. People love you, Jennifer. Really? <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then um, let's see. Man, we have just so much going on here. Okay, guys, if you have questions, put it in chat. Um, so this is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one. Are you friends or family, like outside of outside of your immediate household, have you tried to teach people how to sell on Poshmark? Like, I've got my neighbor Beth, my neighbor Judy selling. Do you teach people? Um, I've tried to, and I think people just don't follow through. They seem really interested, but the follow through isn't there, which is fine. Like, it really takes somebody that is going to keep going like and that's why we're always going to be successful people always get upset at other people saying like don't reveal where you've sourced at like don't let other people know like they're you know like there's going to be too many people there's enough for all of us and it takes really hard dedicated workers to do what we do and you have to have a passion and a huge drive for it and that's why we're successful and my sister-in-law like she's crushed it i she was asking me questions and i got her started and i gave her like the whole rundown on everything with Poshmark. And we went through it bit by bit. And so she started two months ago and she has almost 900 items listed in two months. She works another full-time job. Her um, husband's helping her with it. They're both doing it and she's done amazing. And I'm having like some competition like internally because I'm seeing what she's finding. And I'm like, okay, I got to get back out there. She's found like better stuff than I have. So it's been like some healthy competition. Isn't it a nat you get a natural high yeah. when you find stuff and when you go thrifting. I yeah. mean, I, it's, it's, I, when I go into Ross sometimes dress for less and I see that shoe, you know, but I'm, I know I see the shoe, but I, I don't actually have it in my hands. I grab it and yeah. I know it, it's just, it's crazy. I love it. Um, yeah. And um, it's a passion definitely is, is, um, so, and, and isn't it cool to see her crush it too? Like, Oh, it's awesome. I love it. And they've like stuck with it and like going full force. And my mother-in-law, she loves thrifting. They live in Columbus, Ohio. So I know you just recently had on um, the husband and wife team from yep. Columbus. And so they don't live far from one another, I don't think. And they recently opened the bins in Columbus. And that place is a gold mine. I hate to tell people it like, we have four where I live, like within 30 minutes of one another. And um, I find really good stuff, but there it is really, really good. So my mother-in-law will go with my sister-in-law. She loves to find stuff. And my mother-in-law goes for baby doll heads. She looks for babies' heads and plants plants in their heads. And so we dismember like babies that we find at the bed for her <laughs> and she makes stuff and it's so creative and it, they've like are in super high demand now. People love her baby head plants. So sounds really weird, but if you were to see one, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. All right. So, Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> that was odd. Uh, so those of you who are in chat, I, I want to know something. First, I want to know your Poshmark name. So everybody that's on Poshmark, please put it in your name on, on uh, in chat because I would like to follow you. And I'm definitely going to follow her because it sounds like she's crushing on there. Do you um, – tell me a little bit about your day real quick. So is it kind of – do you have a structured day? So when you wake up, do you list and then you ship? Like tell me a day in the life of you. How do you work your full-time job? Yeah, absolutely. Um, every morning when I get up, I make my to-do list. I'm a big list maker and I'm a big goal maker. So I have daily goals, weekly goals, monthly goals, uh, and a year goal. I have them all written out. So I'll go over kind of like where I'm at in the week goal wise, see if I'm like close to reaching my goals, see where I'm at, like spending wise and make sure I'm within that like 
amount that I want to be spending because I think that's one mistake that I think some resellers make. I'm not going to say all, but some people don't keep track of really what they're making. And I didn't at first either. I was like, and you know, I sold this for a profit. So surely I'm making money. And then when you add up all the cost of goods and like everything you're spending, you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't make any money. So I keeping really good track of that's important. But so I'll go over that stuff. I'll go over my like business stuff, like for the first 20 minutes or so. And then I get into um, pulling my items that I need to ship. So I'll make a list of all the items that need pulled. I'll get those pulled. And then either I go to the bins when they open um, at nine or if I'm staying home that day and just working on listing and shipping, then I'll start my packaging and then I'll start my listing and put my items away. But generally when I go source, I list as soon as I get home, everything I just source and then I put it away. So people are like, how do you source so quickly? But I literally do it as soon as I get home. I walk in, I see my husband, I show him like a few of the amazing things I found really quick. I go upstairs to the bedroom, I turn on the light, I um, write down everything that I bought really quickly and on this piece of paper and which store it's from because the my husband's created an amazing software program where it keeps track of like how much money I'm making from each single store I source at, like where I'm making the most profit, like all of this information. So I keep track of a lot of information also. And so I'll write down what I bought and then as soon as I get it written down, I hang it up, I photograph it like one or two hours later. And then I put it back in the bag to put it back in the basement and it's done. So is your husband working on that? To, is, is he going to streamline that to roll it out to more people? Yeah. He wants to offer it for free if he's able to. The only problem is he created this analytics software through Google. And so we know people won't want to share their like information via Gmail to access that. So we're trying to figure out a way to get this to people without us having to have that access because people would really love this. It's so cool. Like there's a questionnaire on my phone. So if I'm at the bins, let's say, and I sold something and I made an $80 profit, I open up this like application on my phone and it'll say, what store did it sell out? Click the store, how much profit I put $80 and the date is already in there. And so then it uploads it to this amazing spreadsheet where it's showing like, here's what profit you're making from the bins. Oh, you're making 800% profit. You're making 400% Salvation Army. Here's your average sale. Like, so I can see like my average sale at the bins right now it's $14, but my average sale at this fancy Goodwill is $26 an item. So I know I make a lot more. You know where to spend your time. I think that's right. really, right? right. Yeah. Uh, do you guys ever have date nights? Rarely. We don't have a lot of babysitters in the area. <laughs> My parents used to live next door to us before we moved and they moved to Wyoming last year. And so I have a sister-in-law and brother here and that's it. So um, not a lot of resources for babysitting, but I've had a couple of resellers recently actually reach out and send me private messages and ask if we need a sitter. So I did go to Cobra Kai Karate Kid premiere last night. So we got a sitter for that. So once in a blue moon. Nice. Who's the cook in the, in the household? Me. Yeah. And what's your favorite dish to make? Um, right now we eat like, we're like keto diet, if that would make sense to anybody, but we like really low sugar diet. So, um, I would say like doing like a stuffed pork, like with a goat cheese, spinach, roasted pepper thing or something like so that. You're, you're staying healthy then? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, the only reason I ask that is I'm really curious. A lot of times, um, sometimes the men are the primary cooks, the women. So I think that's really cool. And it looks like we got a LOL from the the man. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I was going to ask what his favorite dish was, but uh, chicken parmesan. Like if we're not eating healthy. Chicken parmesan. How long have you guys been married? Five years, but we've known each other for twenty years. Wow. We worked on a cruise ship together a long time ago and stayed friends. And then, yeah. And, and I don't know if you watch, but I'm a big cruise guy. So, okay. yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So give me a snapshot of your YouTube channel. I know that you said that you're doing haul videos and then you're doing um, some kind of questions and like tips and tricks. But what is in store 2018 for your YouTube um, for my YouTube, what's in store? I'm hoping Mondays will be an overview of what sold 
from the week before and to show what profit I made from it, what was the most profitable item and kind of go through that. And then I'd like to do a midweek, like um, give somebody like a few new tips that they might not have known, um, screen share some stuff on Poshmark, go through step by step, like some of the process. And then also show them my process with like living in a small space. How do I do it in a small space? So I'm going to do like a time lapse, um, sometime in the next week or two of like showing me coming through the front door with my bag of stuff and getting it all listed in that short time frame and how I'm able to do that. Get it measured, get it hung, get the descriptions in and show that. Do you list uh, from the, your phone or do you list from your desktop? From my phone. Phone, okay. And yeah, it's, uh, so it's like, oh, go ahead. oh, I was just gonna say another, um, before that too is, I'm curious at how you deal with offers on Poshmark. Um, do you get offended when they offer lowball you? Do you counter? How do you do the um, the offers on Poshmark? Um, I usually don't get offended, and my husband will say take the offer. Usually, always like his thing is if you're making four times the amount of money you spent, you should just take it. And usually, I will, knowing the amount of massive stuff that I have in my house right now. But there are some special items like that Pendleton blanket. Making um, $60 on something I bought at the bins, that's amazing, but I know the value of it, so I'm gonna hang on to it. Um, but if I have a J. Crew shirt that I got at the bins, it cost me 30 cents. I have it listed for 30, somebody offered me 18, I'll take it. It's no problem. Like I, you know, made $16 on it, it's that's fine. So I'm pretty flexible. I do counter quite a few offers, and that's no problem. I have something that I made. Um, that I share to people's closets. So if they've like several items, I'll, I'll just share them and tell them, you know, to feel free to, you know, bundle your items and I'll send you an amazing offer if interested, like a no pressure thing, because I'm not gonna go send a million offers to people if they're just window shopping, but I'll let them know like, hey, this is here. And just so you know, like I'm open to like negotiate and to offers. Um, I fear the next time she steps foot in Oregon, she will never leave. Um, Oregon's my favorite state. So <laughs> my husband knows like, we really want to try to move to Colorado by the end of the year. And, um, but at the top of our list is Oregon. I went to Portland wanting to open a restaurant a really long time, a million moons ago. And I just fell in love with Portland. And so he knows that's like my, like, I love it. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, I'm in, I'm, well, I'm in Beaverton actually, um, Hillsborough area. So yeah. Those bins that the bin pickers used to go to, I live like literally seven minutes away from those. So yeah, it, it, I've looked at taking like a Southwest flight just so I can go take my two free pieces of luggage and fill them up from the bins there and come back home. We've talked about it. So somebody is addicted, guys. Somebody yeah. is addicted, but loves what she does. That's what's so cool. I love I love to see people like that are doing this because they love doing it and doing it really well. And I think that's really cool that you started a YouTube channel. Those people that are in this chat right now that don't have a YouTube channel. And, and the reason I preach YouTube channels is because, well, believe me, I get a lot of flack. Like, you know, a lot of people that do YouTube don't want to promote other YouTubers because they think it's more competition. I think it's so cool that you do. I, yeah. I love that. And I get a lot of flack, but I think that it actually does the opposite effect. And, you know, I think it lifts people up. So. That being said, real quick, what would you say to people that have not started YouTube, but would like to start YouTube? What kind of advice would you give them? Well, I think there's like a tribe for all of us. Like, and when you get in front of potentially thousands and millions of people, you're gonna find people that are kind of like your tribe and you could probably make some of the best friends you've ever had or some of the biggest support system. And you're going to realize that you have a lot more to offer than you, you even realize. Like, I probably don't think I'm offering anything to somebody, but I had people watching and saying, like, I didn't know of that brand. I didn't realize that I'm going to be on the lookout and I'm able to answer people's questions. Like we all have something to offer somebody, all of us do. And I think it's good for anybody to have this outlet and to meet some other like-minded people and get that support from them. That's good. And by the way, Swamp making videos for 10 months, you should definitely come on board. I'd love to interview you as well. Um, I, I think you're hundred percent spot on. It's really cool that you have supports and, and that you're creating these videos and, 
um, I, I recommend everybody start a YouTube channel. So that being said, first and foremost, you were amazing. Thank you so much for coming on board. Thank you for having me. Um, and guys, subscribe to her YouTube channel. It's going to be in the description below. So if you guys are watching this when it's not live, um, subscribe to her YouTube. And then when you do, please let me know in the comments what number of subscriber you are. I love seeing that. Um, and we got to support each other. I'm going to put her, give her a mission. And that's to get the bin pickers live. They would be amazing. Um, and uh, that being said, anytime you are welcome back. In fact, a few months from now, I would love to have everybody that was on here and have like the Brady Bunch on the screen and kind of yeah. see how everybody's doing. Um, and uh, that being said, do you have any parting words for us? And before you say anything, I want to say that this could be reseller related or non-reseller related. Think about when you were stressed out with your job before you went full time. Like what kind of like inspirational stuff can you give the crowd here um, that maybe part time, maybe want to go full time? Anything that you have? Well, I've suffered like through working my tail off doing things I wasn't 100% passionate about. And I thought there was really no other answer. I was scared to like let that security of that paycheck go. We can all do it. Like tr I am not doing anything special. Like I'm doing a little bit of research and I'm getting out there and going to the bins and then I'm just getting it listed. Like I'm not doing anything that like none, nobody else can do. And the fact that I'm able to make this year all profit over $50,000 just from selling on Poshmark, like just from doing something that I love that doesn't even feel like a full-time job. We all can do it. Do something you're passionate about because life is super, super short. And now at 41, I'm like grateful for like kind of starting over and getting to do something that I love finally. And so I'm going to do this and I'm going to work hard at it so my family can travel the world and we can pay off debt and we can enjoy life because it's it's fleeting and we don't know how much time we have and so you should do you, you should enjoy it quit those jobs that you hate and do it build your dream not somebody else's whether, whether it's reselling or not something build your business build your dream mm -hmm. um, and i think that's really cool guys i appreciate you coming i will uh definitely keep in contact please subscribe to her youtube channel I'm excited to see what she has. She's got not only her, but her amazing husband as well. You guys have a great rest of your nights. Thank you so much for joining, and I will see you Monday of next week.